Hi, and welcome to Calvary Grace. This is our Sunday night service, and we're going to get into the Word. Will you bow your heads with me? Precious Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, it's a joy to come before you, and I just pray that you will just open the hearts and the minds of these people, that they'll come to learn and to understand and to walk away with a stronger knowledge of you. Thank you, Father, that you are on the throne. We are in a pandemic situation in the world, and uh, make no mistake, it's real. I, I know that many people think it's a scam, but it's not, it, it is real. The effects of the pandemic are much worse on the elderly or the infirmed, and they're probably the only ones that are going to die, but it may do lasting damage even to young people. Um, the effect of this has been to shut down much of the world. Not all countries shut down, but most of the world did shut down. And significant things are transpiring in our world. There's been a change in our world. Uh, things are ramping up like they never have been before. The, the reins are being loosened somewhat as far as the pandemic is concerned. People are still being encouraged to socially distant, uh, distance and to wear masks, which in some ways mystifies me. Uh, if, for example, I, I read yesterday and it, it's, it just struck a chord in my heart, if masks work, then why aren't we allowed to visit the hospitals? Why aren't we allowed to visit the elderly and the, el the old folks' homes? Uh, if masks and gloves work, and if they don't work, why are we wearing them? What's the point of it? Um, remark but remarkable things are transpiring around the world and not necessarily good things. Something new has come on the world. Uh, it, it's not a, a problem that belongs to the United States. Uh, I'm well aware of the Black, Live, Black Lives Matter movement and the stupidity of the police that killed that man and another man was just recently killed. Uh, in, in New Zealand, the police went into a, uh, a woman's apartment and she ended up dead. And uh, this is going on around the world. Now, I, I do not believe that police are corrupt, wicked, or evil. I think you have bad individuals in any group, doesn't matter whether they're police or doctors or dentists or whatever. Uh, wherever you have a group of individuals, some are good and some are not good. And that's just the long and the short of it, including in the churches. So with that having said, I, I wanna just go for a moment to the world scenario that we're looking at right now. I was on the, one of the business uh, websites this week and the title on the page was, A World on Fire, A World on Fire. And uh, I began to read that through. There are over 86 different countries that are right now in turmoil and when I say turmoil I mean there are protests to the point of violence protests to the point of violence the thief comes to steal to kill and to destroy and there is a new spirit that's been released in the world a spirit of violence um, you know you see it and have seen it for many years in video games uh, it, it, it's always amazed me how you have games like Grand Theft Auto theft the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Then you have uh, other point-and-shoot games. What about this doesn't grieve the hearts of believers? When you start uh, seeing these things, this is part of this generation. We are not killers. Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And yet these are the games that are catching on and selling. Well, from... Uh, that kind of a mindset, and not necessarily from playing those games, but from the mindset of those games, comes the protests that are going on in this world right now. And uh, I'm going to read you a list here of these countries. Some of them have only one protest going on, and some have several. One in Russia, there's about five in Russia, we'll deal with that in a moment, but there's about five. One of them in Russia is 100,000 women. 100,000 women. And uh, there are five of those things going on, and they're becoming more and more violent, more and more agitated. Um, 
Let me read you this list. It starts in Albania and then Algeria, Argentina. Argentina, by the way, has two uh, uh, protests uh, on the edge of riots. Armenia, uh, Australia has two of them, Azerbaijan, Bangladesh, Belarus, Benin, uh, Bolivia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, uh, Brazil has two of them, Bulgaria, Chile, Colombia has three of them, Costa Rica, Croatia, uh, Czech Republic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the uh, Dominican Republic, Ecuador has two of them, Egypt, Ethiopia, France has five separate protests. Gambia, Gaza Strip, Georgia has two of them, Germany has three of them, Greece, uh, Ghana, Haiti, Honduras has two, Hong Kong has two, uh, Hungary, India has six of them. Indonesia has two, Iran has three. Um, Israel has three, Italy has two, Japan, Jordan, Kazakhstan, Lebanon uh, has two of them, Liberia, Madagascar, Malawi, Maldives has two of them, um, Mali has two of them, Malta, Mexico, Mondavia, Mongolia, Montenegro, Monaco, Nepal, New Zealand, Nicaragua, Pakistan, Peru, Poland has two of them, Portugal, Romania, Russia has five, Siberia has two, Slovakia, South Africa, South Korea has two of them, Spain has two of them, Sri Lanka, Sudan has two, Taiwan has two, Thailand, uh, Togo, Tunisia, Turkey has two, Ukraine, United Kingdom has two of them, United States has seven, I think that's the record holder so far, Uruguay, Venezuela has two of them, Vietnam and Zimbabwe, 86 different countries that are saying we are dissatisfied and most of those are saying it to the point of violence. They're saying it with fire, they're saying it with rioting, they're saying it with destruction of property. Now I do absolutely, totally and completely believe that protest is right, uh, non-violent protest. When it comes to stating that something is wrong, I think it's fair and right to be able to non-violently make that kind of statement and uh, that should be uh, uh, should be well accepted in every civilized society. But when it comes to violence, murder, death, destruction of property, destruction of buildings, fires being started, now I have a problem and I have to step back and I have to look at all these nations, 86 of them, right now, today, right now, today, 86 nations in this scenario. And I have to say there's something going on worldwide more than the pandemic. There's something going on that is worldwide more than COVID. Some of these nations never shut down. So when I see this worldwide angst and warlike mentality and fighting and killing and destruction of property, again, the thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I'm come, Jesus said, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Something is released into the world right now. Something wicked this way comes. Something evil this way comes. There's something that's happening in our world right now that is part of the end of the age that should have every one of us with our radar up our antennae up and we should be watching and listening and looking and seeing this is not just something happening in the States to black people. Yeah. This is not something happening in Canada. This is something happening around the world and race has absolutely nothing to do with it. The problems in various countries differ. Mm -hmm. Some want more money, some want more equality. Some are dissatisfied with their government. And when November comes in America, you watch what's going to happen there. Whoever wins, the other side will be disenfranchised and it's 50-50. Half of America will be disenfranchised in November. Some of you are voting for one side or another. God bless you. That's your right to vote. But know this, one half is going to walk away with their head hung. And so we see that the world has changed. 
There's a new spirit been released. There is a tremendous story being told in the book of Daniel, somewhere around about chapter 10. And, and there in chapter 10, you have the story of Gabriel. Gabriel is the messenger angel. And uh, as Gabriel shows up in uh, round, round about there, Gabriel says to Daniel, he said, listen, from the time, Daniel, that you set your mind to gain understanding and you got really serious with God and you began to pray, I was dispatched. But then he tells us something remarkable. He said, it took me over three weeks to get here. Now you would think that these interdimensional creatures that could pass through dimensions could pass time and space instantaneously. And yet he said, I was held up by the prince of Persia. He's describing a demon that had set itself up over Persia, which is today modern Iraq and Iran. And he said that, you know, uh, I, I, was, I was stuck there until Michael the Archangel, I had to send for reinforcements. And when Michael the Archangel arrived, uh, he's your prince speaking to Israel. He said, uh, he helped me and, and I was able to make it through with the answer that you had been requesting from God. Now this gives us an interesting vision of what's going on outside of our world that we cannot see. No, I, I don't mean necessarily outer space. I'm talking in another dimension. I'm trying very carefully here not to sound like the twilight zone, a dimension of sight and sound and so on. But in fact, what we're talking about here is a dimension of the spirit realm, the spirit world, which is more real than the world that we live in. They have the ability to move instantaneously from one part of the planet to another. They have the ability to move through walls. They, have the, uh, they are spirits. They are not corporeal. They, uh, they don't get sick. They don't die. Uh, they will live until they're cast into hell and they will, they'll live there. But at the moment, there is this band, if you will, of black enemy forces surrounding the earth and from time to time, one or more is released. You know, if I had to ask you what the spirit was over Las Vegas, I don't think anybody would have any problem saying there's a gambling spirit there. And, and you know, you could go from city to city, place to place. Uh, my wife is from New York and, and in New York, it, it, there's, there's a spirit of anger. There's always been a spirit of anger there. Um, and uh, as you travel from place to place, you can become aware of these things if you open your eyes and you just watch and see what's going on. Well, a new spirit has been released. Something new has hit the earth. And what we are seeing is this rise of tremendous anger. Now, it would be something if it was all racial. It would be something if it was all financial. I mean, we could look at that and go, well, this is just, uh, you know, an inequality amongst the races. And, 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 and so be it. But what I'm seeing is all kinds of reasons. It's not one reason. There are many reasons. But the attack is the same. Violence. Killing. Destruction. Destruction of property. Anger. Confrontation. This is not peaceful protest I'm talking about. This is something that is demonically inspired and it is worldwide and I think it's the real pandemic. I think that COVID has taken our attention and the devil has begun to do things underhanded that we have not been watching and seeing. We need to open our eyes and see what's going on in our world. Take your Bibles and turn with me, if you will, to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. Now, I don't need to go any further. I'm going to go further, but just, just listen to this. He's making it clear in the last days, there's going to be terrible times. What do we have? We have terrible times. 
86 countries right now, some of them with up to seven violent protests going on at once. Our world is in turmoil. Our world is in, on fire. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. And now he begins to describe it. People will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, self, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Have nothing to do with them. Let, let me tell you, if that doesn't describe our world, I don't know what does. Lovers of themselves. People will be so wrapped into their own lives that I'm what's important, not you. I want the best, I don't care about you. And lovers of, mo lovers of money. This is our generation. Boastful and proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful and unholy. You know, we had a, a, a game being played here in Canada just recently, and uh, I happen to live a couple of blocks from where the kids congregate. I did not know there was a game going to be played, and one night I heard this racket, this noise of shouting and screaming, and I said to my wife, what's going on? She said, there's a game being played. And I, 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 I said, you know, I just feel like I, I want something to eat, and I, I, I said, I'll, I'm just gonna whip out quietly and grab something to eat, and I jumped in the car, and I ended up driving not into where this was happening, but relatively close, within, say, five or six blocks of it. There was a lineup of traffic, if you know the area, from Patello Bridge all the way to 72nd, probably five or six miles in distance. And at the intersection, there had to be 10,000 or more people, no social distancing, no masks, no nothing, shouting and screaming. I tell you, it was really terrifying genuinely terrifying. And this wasn't a protest over something that had happened that way they felt disenfranchised about. This was a protest, if you will, or a, a celebration, but a violent, angry celebration. And I've seen this happen many times. People will be boastful and proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. What makes me happy is good for the world. And if I'm not happy, I, the world can't be happy. It's putting them at the center of everything. Lovers of themselves, boastful and proud, disobedient, brutal, not lovers of good. Treacherous and rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And then, by the way, it goes on, says, having a form of godliness have nothing to do with them. Denying its power have nothing to do with them. It is remarkable to me that they have a form of godliness. And the Bible says, have nothing to do with them. I, I see in this list the things that are transpiring in our world today. People are easily whipped into a mob. And what they wouldn't do is they would lynch those that were not of their race or color. Mobs would form, posses would form, and people would be put to death without proper court and trial.
terrible things were happening. Well, we're starting to see that kind of thing happening on a worldwide scale. There's no official war declared, but there's a spirit of war in the world. There's a spirit of anger in the world. There's a spirit of viciousness in the world. What, what can you do about it? Well, I'll tell you what you can do, first of all, is don't buy into it. Amen. Number one, pray against it. Amen. Pray against it in your home. Pray against it in your life. Unplug from news channels that push this kind of stuff. And, and start to read your Bible. Start to come to understand the times we're living in. Take your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. And here it is. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those that are perishing. What's he saying? He's saying, we don't twist the truth. We've made it plain and clear and simple and straightforward. And if somebody doesn't get it, they don't get it because the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel, uh, the, the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. What's he saying? He's saying that demonic forces, demonic entities, have blocked the minds of people to receive the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's why when you're sharing the gospel, you must pray, God, unblock their minds. God, open their eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against this demonic blindness. I can tell you many times when I have been speaking to people, and I've actually watched this, and maybe you've seen it too, where people you've been speaking to just literally glaze over. It's almost like suddenly you've gone off into a foreign language and they don't understand it. When that happens, stop, go back, start again. But while you're doing it, you pray, God, open their eyes, open their eyes, open their eyes. And I've actually seen their eyes open. I've seen it happen where they have suddenly got it and, and, and they couldn't understand how they couldn't get it beforehand, but now they do. Once was I blind, now I see. Amazing grace. Well, there is a God in this age, there are demons in this age, there is demonic forces in this age, and this is that time when they have their dominion. They don't own the planet, but they have dominion currently. I've heard people argue that Man gave them dominion in the garden. It's a possibility. I wouldn't stand on that as a huge doctrine, but it's a possibility that when Eve and Adam both succumbed to what the serpent said, that he gained a certain dominion over the planet. And from then on, we have been affected by demonic entities uh, that have repeatedly attacked and continued to attack. The first attack starts in the first family you have a murder that transpires between Cain and Abel. And then if you follow the male line through, you'll find that there will be violence and murder all the way through as the enemy tries to stop the coming of the Messiah. Remarkable things will happen and you'll begin to see that there is an enemy that is out there that is violent, that is hateful, that is against Israel and specifically against the believers absolutely violently hates the believers. Now he is not the king of this world, but he is the prince. Here's the words of Jesus. John chapter 12, verse 31. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. The prince of this world. John chapter 14, verse 30. I will not speak to you much longer for the prince of this world is coming. By the way, that tells us something very interesting. It tells us that he can hear what you say, but he cannot understand what you think. He can speak into your mind, but he cannot read your mind. Jesus said, I'm not going to say any more right now because I detect that the devil is coming. He said, I will not speak to you much longer for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. And he doesn't. 
But believe me, he's got a hold on most everybody else. John 16, 11 says this. And in regard to judgment, the prince of this world now stands condemned. So three times, Jesus calls the devil the prince of this world. Now, Jesus is the king. But this individual has this world as his princedom and is releasing at different times different entities, different spirits. Spirits of murder, spirits of violence, spirits of theft, spirits of illness and sickness, spirits of pain. These things are being released in the world constantly. In Ephesians chapter 2, it says this. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the, way, the ways of this world, the ruler of the kingdom of the air, or the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that's now at work in those who are disobedient. Now that tells us something. There is a spirit, there is a demonic entity that's at work in unbelievers that is not at work in believers. We have a power. We have a right. We can stand in the name of Jesus. There is a spirit that is alive and well in this world. And we can see 86 different countries are being affected right now. And again, all for different reasons, different causes, but the effects are the same. It's also bringing down the destruction of their GDP. It's bringing down the destruction of their currencies. It's bringing the world to a financial crisis. And yet they go on and they push on. And they don't care about what else is going on. It's their issue, their problem. That's the most important thing in the universe. It's a spirit. It's an entity. And the Bible says it's alive and well in the unbeliever, but not in the believer. Amen. In us, we are filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. It's now at work in those who are disobedient. Listen to this. It's in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. 1 John 5, 19. And we know that we are the children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. Now, there are several things that are meant when the Bible says world just as when it says heavens. There are several places that are described as heaven. There are also several uses for the word world. One use, of course, is the planet we live on, the world, as we would know. Another is unbelievers. And that's the most common use in the New Testament. When it talks about the world, it's talking about the unsaved. So now listen. We know that we are the children of God and that the whole unsaved world is under the control of the evil one. That's telling us that the world we live in is being pushed and cajoled and shoved. And the remarkable thing is that the prophecies that are been made in the Old Testament and that are being fulfilled around us, the enemy is pushing the world towards it. How is it that we have weapons now that can destroy the planet so many times over? How, how is it that we have not only weapons that can destroy the world, but we have small nations now that have these weapons? Small nations with short fuses and threats are being made. How is it? that all of this is transpiring and that we are seeing 86 different nations in tremendous violent turmoil. Again, let me come back to this. I would understand it if it was all one thing. We're tired of COVID, I could, I could understand that. Or we're having a racial issue, I could understand that or we have a financial crisis. I, I can understand that. All 86 countries, all rising up against a common enemy. But it's not. 
There are so many different reasons and so many different causes here, but the way that they're attacking it is the same. It's with violence. Yeah. It's with guns. Mm -hmm. It's with destruction. It's with fire. It's with terror and terrorizing. It's with murder. There's a spirit behind this. And as believers, we need to see it. We need to recognize it and we need to pray against it. Amen. And we need to be very careful that we don't get on board with what the devil's doing, but stay on board with what God is doing. There is a thief that's come to steal, to kill and to destroy. And he is right now pushing the world in a direction. The remarkable thing is God is well aware of it and has allowed for it and will in the end bring it all under his control. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, 1 Timothy 4, 1, it says this. The Spirit clearly says that in the latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits, lying spirits. That's what's going on. People unwittingly are, are abandoning their walk with God and, and following these lying spirits and things taught by demons. Such things come through hypocritical liars whose conscience have been seared with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those, uh, by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it's received with thanksgiving. And the passage goes on. But it says here, such teachings come through hypocritical liars. You know, uh, I, uh, I, I clicked on a, a file on YouTube and I knew that it would be heretical. I just wanted to know how heretical it might be. And uh, this particular file was the Book of Revelation as being described and explained by Edgar Cayce. Edgar Cayce was a prophet for hire, and Edgar Cayce uh, had the ability to sleep on a book and know every word in that book. He was called the sleeping prophet. He could also diagnose disease while asleep or in a trance. And more than that, he could diagnose and treat disease. And some of his treatments were and still are worldwide. Edgar Cayce was the man that came up with Laetrile for cancer uh, and a number of other cures which actually worked. But Edgar Cayce, although he claimed to be a Christian, would go every night out into his barn where he spoke with his dead brother every night. Either a twin or a, a sibling had died and Edgar Cayce would commune with the dead every night. And then he would come and he would claim to be a believer in Jesus Christ. And he would begin to teach. Well, I started to listen to this purely to see how heretical it was. Not because I was interested uh, in following his teachings. But he began to say that there is no tribulation coming. And that the seven churches there are the seven chakras. And, uh, you know, after about 10 seconds of listening to this nonsense, I cut the file off. And, and you know, when I see that such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron, they don't feel the pain of what they're doing. They will one day when they face the king. And he goes on here and he says, there, there are some that forbid people to marry. We know that there are certain churches that forbid their people to marry, forbid their ministers to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, uh, except for fish on Fridays, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. I realize that the Catholic Church no longer adheres to that, but at one time they maintained that was the word, the living God that he had spoken through the Pope, that they should uh, ab abstain from all other foods except fish on Fridays. Well, there are many of these things around, many of these groups around, not just the Catholic Church, many that molest children, many that do tremendous harm, and some in the Pentecostal circles as well, some in the Baptists, some in all of these denominations. 
there are those in the denominations that are tares among the wheat. Keep your eyes open and pray. And don't fall prey to what the devil's doing in the world. Don't be sucked in because it appeals to you. He makes it seem like it's a righteous and just cause. Every woman should have the right, no, must have the right to abortion. She must have the right to control her own body. Well, then why don't we have the right to go down to the drugstore without a prescription and buy drugs since we must have the right to control our own bodies? You see, there's a lopsided logic here. There's a logic that favors death and destruction. There's a, lop a logic that favors murder. And we need to be very careful where we stand in this thing. Mm -hmm. Well, in Daniel chapter 12, and you can turn there if you with me. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And in this case, though I have been reading from the 1984 edition of the NIV, I'm reading right now from the New King James. I want you to listen. It says, At that time Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands and watches over the sons of your people. Michael the archangel watches over Israel. And no, Jesus is not Michael the archangel. Jesus stands and watches over all people, and particularly his believers. And there should be a time of trouble, such as never been since there was a nation, since there was ever a nation, even to that time. Now here's what's being said. There's going to come such trouble on the world, there will be more trouble in this period of time than has ever been in the past, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. And many who fall asleep, or many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt. This is dealing now with Old Testament believers. They will be resurrected after the judgment of Revelation 20. And as they're, or at the judgment, pardon me, not after, but at the judgment. And some will come to life to receive reward and blessing, and crowns of life, while others will receive everlasting shame and be cast eventually into hell. Verse 3. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. In other words, they will actually literally shine. No, I don't think this is artistic language or poetic language. I think it's literal. They will shine. But you, Daniel, Shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Now just think, this is that time. This is the time when man is able to travel around this planet in a few hours. And with some of the planes that are actually on the books right now, it will be possible to travel from London to Los Angeles in an hour and a half commonly. They're talking now about planes which will go up into space, travel across in space, and come back down. It's going to be remarkably fast. We are able to travel to and fro like never before, and knowledge shall increase. Now listen, when I was a kid, if the teacher said you had to go and get a particular book out of the library, 
you had to be first to get the book out of the library because if you weren't first down there, you didn't get the book. There were three copies and all three copies are out. And so you had to just sit and wait until others were finished before you could get there. Now we have super information availability. You think of any topic that you have ever been interested in, you can Google it. You can look it up in Yahoo, you can look it up in Google, you can look it up in so many different search engines. More than that, if you need to learn something, whether it's playing an instrument or doing some work on a, uh, around the house or on a vehicle, uh, taking up a new instrument, anything, you can find it on YouTube. Knowledge has increased. But Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. The time of the end. Well, when will the time of the end be? It will be when men shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. We are in that day. It's happening now. As I said in the last service this morning, and if you haven't watched it, the file will be available almost immediately. There is nothing left to happen before the return of the Lord. Nothing. He could come back this afternoon for the church. The rapture could happen instantaneously. There are certainly things to have that must happen before the end of it all, before he comes back at the end. But before that, now, he could come back this afternoon. It's all in place. Knowledge has increased. Men are running to and fro. We have the hatred. We have the violence. We have the anger. We have nation rising against nation. By the way, that term nation is the word ethnos. Ethnic will rise against ethnic. That's going on in just about every nation somewhere. There's some group that is claiming identity and they don't want to lose their culture. They don't want to lose their language. They don't want to lose their way of being. It's climbing and building. We have earthquakes. As a matter of fact, we're having over 10,000 a year and they grow exponentially. It's all being played out right in front of us. All of this is in play now. We have seen nation rise against nation Ethnos rise against ethnos. We've seen white cops kill black people. We've seen black people kill white people. We've seen burning of buildings. We've seen people protesting around the world because they're hungry. It's all for good cause, by the way. This will never be because people just got up one morning ticked. It's all for good reason. But there's a spirit behind this. So what can we do? Well, the first thing we can do is keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Amen. Focus in on him. Be very careful what you protest for. And if you're going to protest, how you protest. Protestation should never include violence. It should never include property destruction. It should never be threatening. What it should be is a way of saying we have a grievance, a legitimate grievance. And in this grievance, we want others to help us get some justice. Watch what's going on in your world. Jesus is at the door. Live life like the rapture could happen today. Will you bow your heads with me? Precious Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you are the King. And though there is a prince that is affecting this world, princes are not kings. And though for a time he's enjoying his control over this princedom, one day the King is going to come back. And the Prince of Peace 
will have rule over this planet. Lord, right now, the accuser, the prince of anguish, the prince of terror, the prince of destruction, the prince who is a thief, who's come to steal and to kill, has reigned. But his day will end. Help us, Father. Sustain us and keep us. Keep our eyes on you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.